Hi, my name is Shelly Marie and I'm going to introduce you to a uh, alternative way to paint your doll's hair using pan pastels. Now pan pastels I like because they are pure pigments in a cake form. They come in a variety of colors but they have no creams or oils added as makeup usually does in their cake forms. So pan pastels are great for vinyls. Now what I like the best about this uh, new technique that I've discovered is it, it gives you a very soft uh, effect of the hair, but you still see the details of the hair lines in now you can get the same effect still with other paints. On the left here is a Genesis uh, hair and on the right is one that's made with the pan pastels. But uh, I do like the pan pastels because it is a lot uh, quicker I find and easier to apply it. So let's get started. Here's a picture of the supplies you will need. You can buy this as a kit through McPhersonArtsAndCrafts.com or you can purchase them individually. I'll be going through some of these supplies and why I use them as we go along with this video. I'm using three colors in this video. The first one is a colorless blender which helps to blend your pastel a little easier on your surface. The next one is a burnt sienna tint, then there's a black, and then there's the raw umber that I will be using. And as you see in this real picture, there are three colors in a baby's hair to make it kind of pop and have a 3D effect. Darker haired babies will start with a light brown underneath and then a medium on top and then the very darkest on the very top of the head. Now back in my painting studio here I'll explain some of the brushes we're using. The first one is a one inch flat top mop I use. It's very nice for uh, blending the uh, paint on top of the head. The bristles are nice and soft and dense and pushes the uh, pastels around quite nicely. You'll also need a paint palette knife to uh, scoop up your uh, pastels to help mix them. Next is a variety of liners that we have. We have a uh, just a straight number one liner, a number zero five script liner that will give you some fine lines, and then we have the uh, dagger which I love. It uh, moves around uh, the pastels quite nicely as well. A variety of sponges, dense is uh, helpful uh, in case you need to uh, remove some of the pastel. And then of course you'll need the sealer from the Reborn FX line that uh, seals the uh, pan pastel paints onto your doll's head. So here I have my finished doll's head that I'm going to apply hair onto. It has been sealed with the sealer and just patted on with the sponge and let dry overnight. This will protect my head as I put the uh, pastels on it and allow me to remove the pan pastel uh, without removing the paint on the head later on if needed. So in this frame I'm just taking some of the uh, colorless blender here and I'm scraping it with my pa my uh, palette knife there. Uh, just make sure you don't dig holes in it. It's just a nice little scrape across the top and uh, the powder will fall onto your uh, paint palette there. Now the next one I'm using is just a little bit of the uh, raw umber and I'm putting it onto my palette just beside the blender. And then I'll uh, put the uh, raw umber tint here and it's going to go onto my palette as well. And then I'm going to take all of these and mix them together. My ratio is about even, uh, one to one to one, and this will make my first layer of hair color. I want it to be light and I also want to make sure that it's uh, mixed up there well with with the blender in the other colors and you can see it's a very nice uh, light brown tone. And now you may see me making my second color that will be the mid-tone in the hair. I'm just taking some of the uh, raw umber there and I added just a tiny bit of the light color there you saw at the beginning and then I added some blender. Um, basically the blender I put in about a quarter of the amount there and uh, I will mix up my uh, color just to make sure that it's about a mid-tone. You can see the difference there on the uh, two colors on the palette. And then I will take some blender and I'm going to make my third um, uh, tone here. I'm going to add some raw umber. Uh, the black is very black so I'm just trying to tone down the uh, raw umber um, and uh, give it a little bit of darkness there. So you'll see me mix just a tiny bit of black into it. Uh, again, the, basically the same ratios. Add about a quarter of the blending um, powder I find and then uh, mix in and just, uh, just start off with just a tiny bit of black because as I said it's very potent and I just want a dark dark brown there and not really going for a black color for this baby that I'm doing. 
So now that I have my three colors mixed, I'm ready to apply my first coat onto the baby. I need my sealer, of course, and then I will need my uh, flat top mop. So here I am, I'm going to dab into the uh, into the um, first color there and you'll see that I'm kind of patting around to get it loaded into the brush. I usually start at the back of the head and then I'll move kind of forward. It's about a medium pressure. You're not really pressing really hard onto the powder. You're, the whole idea is just to get it uh, onto the scalp as evenly as you can and apply uh, more if you see any sparse uh, areas where more powder is needed. So that's basically all I'm here is blending it on, checking it out to make sure it's evenly applied and then I'm ready for the next uh, stage here. And I'll remove my powders out of the way so I don't get uh, my fingers into it. By the way, if you do get dirty fingers on uh, when you're doing this, please make sure you clean them because it's easily transferred onto the vinyl. So I'm just taking my sealer here and I'm giving it a good shake as you should with all of the Reborn FX products and I'm going to put it into a little uh, container here just for easier access with uh, the brushes I'm going to use next. Now it should be about an ink consistency. If you want really thin lines, you can add a few drops of water. Uh, we always have the saying, thin line, thin water, thin paint. So that gives you a little bit of an idea here of uh, how I'm getting the, uh, the solution to go on uh, in very thin line. Now you can see that I'm just uh, applying it here as you would uh, any other um, painting method. What this is doing is just giving you kind of, you'll kind of see like a watermark uh, as you do this on top of the powders. Um, it's very interesting as to how it, it, it turns out in the end. Um, you'll, you'll see it a little bit better as we get going on uh, how it looks. Uh, this is a very light color that we put on here, uh, so you will have a hard time seeing it on this video probably. So when I start doing this, I basically go around the edges of the hairline to kind of give it a shape that I'm looking for. So that's what you're seeing here is I'm just applying it around on the edges of the hairline, uh, getting my uh, idea in my head as to uh, what kind of a hair I want to put on to this doll. Now I'm going to just uh, play this a little bit uh, faster for you uh, as you watch me with the uh, brush strokes and the hairlines here. Uh, everybody's uh, design will be different um, and since you really can't see the strokes on here that well at this point in time, you'll see it as I said later on, um, uh, I don't want to bore you with uh, about two hours of uh, painting, which really it didn't take me two hours. But one thing you'll notice is that I'm not dipping my brush into the solution as many times as I would be if I was using paint. Uh, so this is really making this technique uh, go a lot faster than my other techniques that I use and this is what I really like about this. So uh, as you're seeing here, I'm now producing a crown with this uh, lining, uh, getting some hairs in place, and then I will take my uh, hairs from the crown and uh, draw them in so that they kind of join in with my end uh, hairs there. So here's the first layer finished. Uh, you can notice uh, the lines a little bit better. I'm bringing it up to a little closer to the camera here. But you'll notice that uh, it's not a full head of hair. I've uh, left it very sporadic to allow the other colors to be added on later. So we're going to leave this dry now for about uh, 10 to 15 minutes. It doesn't take very long. Uh, just dry to the touch is basically what we're going for at this point. And now we're ready for the uh, second layer once it's dry. So here we're into my second color. Uh, it's a little bit darker than the first and uh, you'll see me dressing it into my brush. I like to get it into the brush. And then you'll also find that I will at the very beginning use a very, very light touch. Because as you can see in the picture here, that color now is very very, very dark and I don't want it to uh, go all the way rub it right into the vinyl at the first when it's being that dark so uh, you'll see me with a very light touch at the very beginning and I am going over top of the uh, light powder 
When I first started doing the dolls this way, I used to uh, wash off the first uh, layer of powder, but I found out later that wasn't necessary. The uh, dark color goes and takes over the uh, light powder quite quickly that is loose on there. Remember that uh, the light powder is sealed uh, for the hair lines, and you'll see how the washing off will uh, make that uh, magic happen with the hair lines. But, uh, so I finished basically with the uh, the blending of the second layer and I'm on to uh, going to line again using my number one liner still and I'm going to you can actually see the uh, lines through from the uh, first layer so you'll be able to see where you can apply more lines with your darker color here so I again I start around the edges that's just my uh, way of doing my hair and I will uh, be crisscrossing hairs, uh, making a little bit thicker, going in between the lines. Sometimes it's over top of the light hairs, lines that are there. I'll be making little tendrils if I want uh, them in there. This is now getting into more detailed designing. Uh, so you'll see me going around with, uh, with the stroke work and uh, making my hair a little more detailed with this medium color here. I've attached a close-up picture here so you can see it a little more uh, clearly. Um, you can see how the uh, lines are showing up on the second layer. As you see me lining here, you also uh, notice that I am not going to be uh, covering all of my other uh, hair strokes. That's why it's nice that I can see those hair strokes through this powder. Uh, if I covered them all over, then uh, it defeats the purpose of putting the first layer on. So I want to allow some of that light color to still show through. So I will uh, allow some of those uh, little tiny hairs to come through and not put any of the, the uh, stroke work on top of them. Or I will just put a little slight uh, dark root area onto that one lighter stroke and leave the end of that stroke uh, very light in color. Again, noticed how little I am dipping that brush into the uh, into the sealer there. I get a lot of strokes out of that uh, that uh, sealer on top of this uh, hair powder, which is again the way it makes it go faster. You'll know when to uh, dip back in is obviously when you don't see that waterline mark or it starts to skip. You'll know you need to add some more sealer into your brush. So I'm just finishing off here a few more little hairlines that I feel needed with the medium color. And then after uh, that is uh, completed, I'm going to check it over, see if there's any real big blanks in there. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, so now I'm going to uh, just leave it dry. So I've left the doll dry about uh, two hours. I want to make sure that the sealer is uh, really dry and that uh, I'm not going to be washing it off or I will lose all the effects I've just did and have to start all over again. So here you see me washing off the powder. I'm using a cloth that's very soft. It's uh, just a piece of material I, similar to about a pillowcase very soft cotton. I'm using a very light touch and as you see I'm uh, moving my my cloth in the way the hair is going. You don't see me doing circles or rubs or anything. It's just a very light uh, touch and all it's doing is uh, loosening up all the loose powders that are on there that haven't been sealed with the sealer. So once that is done, I will just uh, dab it dry here and uh, we'll show you now you can see all the hair lines and all the loose powder is off of it, leaving the powder that we have sealed in. And look at this. It's just absolutely amazing I found when uh, I was doing this. So now I will just uh, dab off the uh, extra water here. Uh, once it's dry, we're then ready for the next layer of hair. 
Now for the third section, I apologize, we had to use an alternative doll for it to uh, finish this tutorial. What had happened is uh, the first doll I was working on here, uh, when I was filming, I happened to be off the camera, so you couldn't see anything I was doing. So I did another doll, and uh, then uh, using the same colors, uh, using the same technique, and I will show you that doll. We'll come back to the other doll at the very end, because I do have pictures, and the rest of the films were fine with the very first doll. So this baby's head is ready for me to apply the third layer, the very last layer. It is the darkest of them all, and you'll see that I have my um, my powder there is mixed over in another palette. It's the uh, very darkest of the three colors we selected before. It has a uh, black in it along with the raw umber and some blending uh, uh, powder with it. So I'm going to take my dark hair mix here and uh, going to... Uh, just put my brush into that and then you're going to see me pull out another little um, just a piece of tile here it helps me to dress the uh, dress the powder into the brush a little bit better since I've got a uh, uh, more of a pocket that I'm working with with that uh, with that color in there so uh, it just smooths it out into and gets it evenly distributed by uh, pouncing it onto that little flat surface instead of working out of the round uh, cup holder there. So I'm going to apply this dark up on the very top of the head. This is usually where you see most of the darkness and the shadows of the hair coming in on uh, dark haired babies. So I will uh, uh, keep it just away from the edges because I want the edges, the little hairs that I've done in the lighter color to come out underneath and I don't really want to cover it with the uh, dark powder. So I will keep that powder just a little bit away from the edge there to allow for the uh, light hairs to to come through those areas there so I'm just uh, gently smoothing it on you'll see that I'm uh, again stroking the brush in the way the hair is growing here uh, I'm not doing it at around uh, around in circles I'm just trying to imitate the uh, hair lines uh, it's a lot easier to apply it this way on your last layer because if there's any grabbing that's going to happen the grabbing will happen uh, in the area that you're stroking it up and down and not leave a uh, residue behind that that's in an odd shape that doesn't match your hairlines. So if that, hopefully that kind of makes sense to you. So I'm just smoothing it out here and I'll soon be finished and ready for the uh, next procedure. So now it's just time to check it out and see if there's any areas that I missed. And if there is, uh, I'll just take my uh, powder and uh, just apply in that area. You'll you'll notice that also that uh, the dark color is on there, but I can still see my uh, lines from the uh, layer underneath, which is nice because uh, that I want to be, be able to see that to see where I'm going to put my dark color over top of that again. So. Uh, now we're ready for the uh, sealer, so we'll just uh, set the doll down and get rid of all the uh, oops, there, uh, powders uh, out of the way and make sure that there's no loose powder around uh, for me to get uh, onto the other areas of the doll. I don't want the powder on here, so make sure you're working in a clean surface. My sealer this time is in a, a jar, so I'm just going to give it a shake. Again, it's just for easier application. I put the sealer in there, and uh, it's easier to dip my brush in. So I'm using a number one liner again here. Um, it seems to be my favorite one, but I also uh, use the other uh, liners as well, or a variety of, the, of them actually. Uh, if you happen to have uh, purchased the uh, kit that came along with this uh, video, uh, you'll find that you got a mini little dagger and I actually like that little dagger brush because it leaves a nice a little bit of a thicker line but it's really nice to control and I like to use it on the very last layer to give a, the hair some different variety widths and uh, it goes really nicely on the top area of the hair where you want some wide and thick hair going on. And then you'll also have a, a very small little uh, script liner, I think it's a 05 that comes in that kit. I use that for the very fine hairs. Um, if uh, at the very beginning I can add a few fine hairs around, around the ear area or anywhere else, uh, you can also add fine hairs at the very end too in areas that you want just a little bit of a fine hair showing through. 
So you do have a variety of brushes to work with. Uh, you don't have to use the uh, liner like I have uh, through most of this video. So I think we'll just uh, speed this up a little bit and you can see me stroke in the hairlines uh, just a little quicker here. So I'm just finishing up here and taking a good look around to see if there's any other little hairs I want to fill in some spaces. It all depends on uh, what design you're trying to go for as to how many hairlines you want to put in, how dense you want it, how sparse you want it. Um, we're also going to show you here how you can also use this powder technique for doing eyebrows. So here I've uh, taken some of the dark and I'm just uh, doing the curvature onto the eyebrow area that I want to uh, put some hair onto. You see me uh, just kind of nicely stroking it in. 
And then what I'll do is I'll take my uh, brush. Now I'm using the number one liner here and I do know that you really should use your tinier one. The 05 works a lot better for finer lines. This doll ended up with quite a bushy eyebrow because of that thick liner. But it does work uh, the same way as the hair does. So um, do give it a try and uh, leave it dry the same and, uh, and wash it off uh, the same as you would with, with the hair as well. Once you are all finished uh, with uh, putting your hair on, you're going to leave it dry as we had done in the previous uh, section. Uh, I give it at least a two hour drying period again. You want to make sure that that sealer is, uh, is dry. So here we are, we're at our last washing stage here. So we're going to take our doll and uh, with our soft cloth we're going to uh, dip her down underneath the water there and you'll see me taking that cloth and stroking it uh, the way the hair grows. Um, now this time you're going to see me doing a few little rubs on here. I've been very easy with it with the other uh, layers and this layer being a lot darker um, I found that uh, some of the uh, residue kind of fell down uh, amongst the little hairs that I wanted to keep light. So uh, knowing that the sealer is uh, is very dry, I can get away with rubbing it uh, with a little bit of pressure here. So you'll see me uh, doing that little bit of rub around the edges and around the uh, eyebrows as well. So uh, just be careful, but at the same time, don't be uh, too scared of adding a little bit of pressure there if you want uh, some of the darker color to come off of there. So I'll just dab her off here. And uh, somebody's probably going to ask me, do I always keep the eyes in the dolls? Uh, I'm going to get water in behind. Yes, I will. Uh, I just put eyes in there just to be aesthetically pleasing for this video. Normally, I would not put the eyes in until the very last when I'm all done my... Uh so remember, if you uh, come across any areas that you feel you needed some more uh, hairlines in there, you can always do the procedures all over again. There's no uh, stopping. Now some of you are going to be starting to ask the question, what happens if I mess this up and I hate the hairlines that I already have in there? What can I do? If you painted with the uh, heat set uh, paints or sealed it, you should be able to remove the powders with uh, just a little bit of pressure and some uh, regular soap, dish soap. Try that and uh, that should help you with uh, removing the powder. If your skin tones are done with the air dry paints, you may want to try a Formula 911 solution. It is good at uh, removing uh, stains uh, that happen from the powders. It uh, can work for you there, but just add just a small amount of pressure and go easy with it, or you may end up uh, going into your skin tone. Once you are done finished painting your doll hair and you are liking it, you will need to varnish it. You can do that either with the Genesis heat set or with a air dry varnish. I prefer to use a satin or a matte varnish on top of my hair for protection. And for your interest, some pictures of some other dolls I have done. You'll notice that they're just very simple uh, hairstyles that I've put on, but uh, that's what I'm working with at this point in time. I probably will do one with a little more detailed hair since I'm having so much fun with this, and uh, we'll see where that gets me. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you found this uh, tutorial interesting. Mm -hmm.